Let's say that for some reason you want to model this amazing physics at Lancaster prospectus and you want to model it into a cylinder. How do you do that? What kind of equation do you need to write to model the surface? And this will be helpful particularly once you look at partial derivatives along specific directions. It matters the direction that we take along the cylinder. So we should definitely have a simple equation to describe it. How do we do that? First of all, we get rid of this and we don't need cones anymore. And we want to have a look at an equation that describes a cylinder. Turns out that this is very easy. The equation that describes a cylinder in three dimensions is actually the equation that describes an ellipse. What you can ask is why is this the case? And for that, let's bring back the physics perspectives. Yeah, if we turn this into a cylinder, it's not easy because physics at Lancaster is really good. If we turn this into a cylinder, you'll see that essentially along this axis, what you have is a series of ellipses that satisfy this condition. In a way, what you can say is that this equation is valid for essentially all z's. And if you were to draw it, it's z axis, y, and x. It will open up along the z axis. That's because of the equation. It means you're getting ellipses everywhere along the z-axis and they're essentially connected and this describes a cylinder we can also get rid of this and display it in a much nicer way and again if you use Topcat you'll be able to load the grid that I provide you and you'll be able to plot a cylinder the volume contained within it or even a cylinder with a specific thickness and then again you could rotate around it and you can change the parameters so you see what happens to the cylinder. There are other surfaces that are quite cool to draw and one of them is hyperboloid. Hyperboloids can be described by equations that look similar to what we've looked already but not quite and we can write x to the power of 2 over a squared plus y squared over b squared minus z squared over c squared equals 1 for example this is describing the surface that you can see appearing here which is an hyperbolic with just one sheet and what you can do is if you flip the signs to minus x squared over a squared minus y squared b squared plus c squared over c squared equals 1 you still get an hyperbolic, but with different topology. You're essentially cutting it off, and now there's two sheets. And just like for the other surfaces, you could plug this into Topcat and you can play around making your own hyperbolic and showing off your amazing physics one on one skills of describing surfaces that result from functions of two variables. There are many other surfaces that you could describe with simple equations and visualize, and that are useful for modeling physical systems and other systems in society. And the final ones that I'm going to bring up are paraboloids. These paraboloids that you're seeing right now can be described with variations of the equations that we've looked at. And this is mostly just to show you that sometimes just flipping a minus or plus sign or equaling to a constant or not can completely change what you're looking at. Because this is the final surface that we're having a quick look at, I would encourage you again to try Topcat together with the grid that you find on Moodle and try to visualize some of these surfaces and gain some intuition about what happens when you change one parameter in x, y or z because sometimes it's really useful to try to visualize the problem you're trying to solve irrespective of it being a pure maths problem or a more applied physics problem visualizing in this case surfaces is really crucial to make sure that we understand the problem and then we come up with the best possible solution. We have therefore reached the end of section 7. This was obviously a very quick one but important to build the framework to deal with functions of more than one dimension 
how you can visualize them, what they mean. And this will be really important for you to then interpret partial derivatives and on our way to defining and using directional derivatives. So I'll see you on the next section, part or video. Where's my ukulele? Here it is, ready to transport me directly to section eight, where we're going to be looking at partial derivatives. It's going to be legendary.